Hello, this is uh, the course Solid State Devices at Purdue University at the School of Electrical and Computer Engineering. I welcome it to you to this course. My name is Gerhard Klemek. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering. I'll start out with some introductions in this section one. And uh, I'll like to get started on why are these devices at all interesting and list some of the learning objectives of this course. And they're interesting, I think, because it's the first technology that migrated into nanotechnology. In fact, you can argue we all have nanotechnology devices in our pockets today. And that technology and that evolution has changed human history. And it has changed human history quite like, in a sense, the uh, discovery of fire, in that it completely changed how we interact and how we conduct business and how we communicate. And it really influences our daily life dramatically. And uh, I would like to compare that to a child here looking at a tablet computer, an, an iPad computer. Now this is a pretty old device by now. And it's still a very uh, powerful device. And uh, I'd like to compare that to a Cray 2 from 1985. At that time, that was the world's fastest supercomputer. And those two uh, computing uh, pieces, one a supercomputer on the left, and the iPad being held in the hand of a child, deliver four gigaflops of operations. That means uh, 10 to the 9 floating point operations per se uh, second. So four times 10 to the 9 operations per second. Now, that means you have in your hands a supercomputer from the 1980s. And holding in hands is kind of an interesting uh, thing because this device, this Cray, needed water cooling. It needed a custom room. People needed custom training for this. And obviously, uh, a child can't even possibly read, and at least my kids were so young, they didn't know how to read, but they knew how to use an iPad. So, so they didn't have any custom training, per se. And it's, it's truly mobile. In fact, it's so mobile, it was taken to the space station. Now, let's compare some other specs. The Cray 2 weighed uh, 5,500 pounds, or 2,475 kilogram. The iPad is 40,000 times smaller and comes in at roughly at 1.3 uh, pounds. Let's look at the power consumption. The Cray used 195 kilowatts. The iPad uh, runs under 40,000 times less um, uh, wattage. Now, let's find another device that roughly uh, weighs uh, 5,500 pounds and roughly 195 kilowatt. That is my minivan that I take when I go skiing with my kids um, over Christmas or spring break and we haul across the country. Now that minivan literally has about 5,500 pounds when it's loaded and delivers 180 kilowatt. Now, um, another uh, uh, comparison is the price point. These crays came in at 12 to 17 million dollars. Now, an iPad at the time when it sold is about 20,000 times uh, cheaper and came in at 500 and, uh, to 700 dollars. Let's look at the number of devices being sold. A Cray 2 uh, sold 27 units. Now, the iPad sold a million on the first weekend when it came on the market. And overall, about 35 million were sold in a single year. So, the, the advancements is just dramatic. You see in red on the bottom right, how, how much more improvement we got in terms of making things smaller, consuming less power, less weight, uh, less price, and how many more devices we have available now. So really, this kind of trend has changed how we communicate. It has really infiltrated any business operation, any manufacturing, even agriculture. You can't live your life in, a, in, in the Western world um, uh, in a developed world without being touched by nanotechnology. You'd really have to live completely off the grid and, 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 
and uh, produce your own food and, and not be connected to electricity to not be touched by nanotechnology. So this has changed human history. And it's truly everywhere now. You are familiar with uh, small chips in your credit cards for security. You might have an RFID tag for, t for the toll booths and if you live in a bigger city. If you go skiing, you might have an RFID tag around you to identify yourself and um, 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 use it as an identification for financial transactions. But it's more than just secure financial transactions. We use these now for short-term use commodities to tag medicine, to tag animals, or to tag uh, merchandise. So this, uh, this device technology, even these simple RFID tags that are not as powerful as the CPU on the top right, but we, uh, 76 billion of those were sold in 2018. I mean, that's a dramatic infiltration into our world. Now, there was a person that sort of envisioned that. Gordon Moore is a co-founder of Intel, and in 1965, he uh, had a projection that was an economic one. He was looking at the relative manufacturing cost per component and the number of such components that could be built on an integrated circuit. So it's really an economic consideration of building more for less. And with three data points, he sketched these curves where the price, the relative manufacturing cost per component is going down on an exponential scale and the number of components are going up, are go uh, going up um, that are on the integrated circuit. And as most technology um, uh, predictions or uh, 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 trends, uh, the price might go down, but at some point you have diminishing returns and that's why these curves tend to back up. Meaning, if you add more circuits uh, into a, at a particular time, the cost goes back up. But if you're um, on, a, on a golden trend to go down, that is where you keep your technology. So Gordon Moore envisioned uh, putting more components together. But he probably didn't envision that we have 10 to the 9 of these integrated uh, uh, components on a chip. That's a billion transistors. So let's co uh, compare these trends from uh, his prediction in, in 1970 to uh, today. Now let's uh, compare these different CPUs over, over time and count the number of transistors that are on a chip. Those transistor numbers were doubling every two years. And uh, as I mentioned on the previous slide, we are now uh, roughly at a billion transistors on this uh, uh, by 2012, 2015. Today, we are actually at 10 billion transistors per, per chip. And that's a, a tremendously large number. And I like to compare that to the number of humans on, on Earth. And what I like about this comparison is that uh, imagine a world where everybody works together in harmony and they don't have a war. Well, on a computer chip, you have 10 billion transistors working together cohesively in a structure, well-ordered, and uh, that is how large that number is. And it's a design marvel, it's a technology marvel. So. Let's look at those marvels here. It's a 22 nanometer trigate transistor. It really came out already in 2012, so kind of old. And uh, let's look at this one in a little bit more detail. Uh, it really stems from generations and generations of reduction in transistor size, as shown here on the bottom. So this is the 22 nanometer node, uh, where the nominal gate length is 22 nanometers. That's here sketched the metal gate that is here on, on, the, on the top, sort of shown in silver. And that corresponds uh, to reducing prices per transistors, and this chart is measured relative to a 350 uh, nanometer technology, so 0.35 micron. All right, so let's look at this transistor in a little a bit more detail. This is really the first mass-produced three-dimensional transistor where not everything is happening in the plane, but there is a, a fin that's indicated here in yellow um, that is very thin. 
and um, that is where the electronic action happens in that fin and here's a, a scanning electron micrograph of that sort of copy uh, copied in there uh, to give you an idea where I want to look in more detail so I'm blowing this slide up here so here is a, a, a an SEM of this uh, fin in this fin fat and it is eight nanometers thin let me translate eight nanometers to you that's ballpark 64 atoms that is countable in atoms it is extremely small these devices are manufacturers to manufacture to atomic precision that is just fascinating just from a technology perspective and it's also interesting from a conceptual perspective how do electrons move through such a structure and we'll start understanding these kind of things in this course all right so these devices are atomically small that's the punchline of this of this slide and they're small that you can compare them for example to a, a red blood cell which is ballpark 7,000 nanometers large so dramatically smaller than this biological object that you're aware of all right now we talked a little about economics of these transistors uh, let me compare them um, I found uh, some really nice data on a website called our world and data and the reference is here below and they have tracked a, a variety of different uh, uh, products uh, throughout um, recent human history so here is refined cane sugar and milk as uh, dating back to 1930 and these numbers are inflation adjusted and what you see is that milk overall got a little bit cheaper not even within a factor of 10 as an inflation adjustment and if you look at more uh, uh, technology products here are examples of the polyester fiber or the automotive uh, products or a wind turbine what you see there is uh, if you're lucky you get about a factor of 10 improvement in price due to technology advancement or manufacturing advancement etc now let's compare that to the transistor the transistor has dropped in price since 1970 dramatically like in a phenomenal way that almost no other technology has uh, performed so this is almost unprecedented um, there are uh, products like the DRAM which is of course just uh, an accumulation of transistor cells it dropped dramatically as well that's how we store bits on on a chip um, here's an example of the laser diode it also dropped dramatically in price uh, over two orders uh, of magnitude photovoltaics didn't drop as much um, two uh, not quite two orders of magnitude uh, but still a significant drop and that is almost unprecedented in technology there's two other examples that um, I have seen similar price drops the hard disk drive is uh, of course closely related to the semiconductor industry as you process data you need to store it and you need to store uh, more data as you process more so um, it's uh, maybe a coincidence but maybe not really a coincidence that also the, the hard disk drive prices uh, drop dramatically as well there's another completely different technology that is DNA sequencing that dropped uh, dramatically as well but these are really the the only technology advancements that that have seen such a a change and such a, a, a larger availability to consumers to be used uh, as compared to these other technologies so the reason in these uh, uh, we, we can have uh, semiconductor devices in nanotechnology anywhere is because they have gotten so cheap without that we couldn't afford having that everywhere so that is why I argue this is why it can change human history and has changed human history all right so in this course we will uh, study these uh, three different classes of devices we'll focus on the transistor and electron flow but we'll also touch photovoltaics and we we'll touch uh, 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 light emission devices like lasers 
And um, the, the goal really for you as a student in this class is to, to explain the working principles of these devices to others and have a conversation about that with other engineers that are interested in this. You'll be able to explain the physical processes in these devices. And uh, you'll, you'll be able to relate the device performance in, in these materials uh, to the design criteria of these devices and the goals that you set out. And you'll speak a language of device engineers. And you'll be ready to engage in device research if you choose to do so. So these are really the learning objectives that are connected to these three classes of devices and you can expand from these classes of devices into novel material, researchy materials, etc. So in the next segment I'll talk uh, uh, about the basic device operations and I'll raise a thousand questions that we'll hopefully answer throughout the course. Thank you.